Russell tracked their blood pressure at home for two weeks. Their blood pressure was consistently 140 over 90. They took their blood pressure diary to their primary care provider, who then diagnosed them with hypertension. Their primary care provider recommended they make some lifestyle changes before they talk about the need for medications. Six million Canadian adults have high blood pressure, representing 19% of the adult population. Of Canadians with high blood pressure, 17% are unaware of their condition, and only 66% have it treated and under control. There are a lot of things that you can do to keep your blood pressure in a healthy range. So what are some of the complications of uncontrolled high blood pressure? Having elevated blood pressure uh, over periods of time can result in damage uh, to several different organs, including the heart, the blood vessels in many parts of your body, such as the brain, which could result in a stroke, your limbs, which could result in narrowing of the arteries and peripheral vascular disease, uh, or your kidneys, which can decrease the filtering capabilities and um, cause chronic kidney disease. Uh, some of the symptoms that people might experience would be chest pain if they have narrowing of the heart arteries uh, called angina. So when people walk around uh, or exert themselves or have emotional stress, they may have chest discomfort. A heart attack uh, will occur when the blood supply to the heart has been compromised, uh, usually when a clot forms on an atherosclerotic plaque, blocking off oxygen flow to the heart. And heart failure, where the heart muscle weakens over time or becomes too stiff to pump and um, your body will start retaining fluid and that fluid can go into the, heart, the lungs and people will have challenges breathing and may have swelling in their legs. Also irregular heartbeats, which can uh, lead to um, things like atrial fibrillation or other heart rhythm disturbances that may even result in death. Um, we're talking about the brain, specifically we mentioned a stroke where blood flow is cut off. People can also have um, blood, uh, can have hemorrhages where blood vessels may burst and cause damage to the brain um, that way. And also high blood pressure can result in uh, cognitive problems and small blood vessel damage in the brain and is even a risk for Alzheimer's disease. What are some lifestyle choices that you can make to keep your blood pressure healthy? This is a great question because there's so much that can be done to uh, lower your blood pressure that's not related to medications. And what we find is that if you know exercise on a regular basis decreases your blood pressure by five um, and a diet can increase, decrease your blood pressure by two to five um, and decreasing your salt intake can decrease your blood pressure there's an additive effect of all of these things. So the first thing is maintaining an ideal or healthy body weight, eating a healthy, balanced, uh, reduced fat diet, uh, reduce the amount of salt in your diet by lowering your consumption of foods that have added salt or foods that have high salt content to begin with. You can uh, look through food labels and learn how to do this from a dietitian or be coached by your physician. Participating in regular physical activity is important. Um, being smoke free and limiting your alcohol intake. So um, alcohol is one of those uh, substances that when you consume it, it can increase your blood pressure. So uh, there are people that may have hypertension or high blood pressure and it goes away just because they decrease or eliminate their alcohol consumption and then avoiding caffeine. So uh, some people may have four or five cups of coffee a day and that's quite a lot. Um, and that can result in high blood pressure as well. So there's a whole host of things that you can do before you even consider a medication that can significantly decrease uh, your blood pressure and as a result, decrease your risk of having these negative outcomes that we've described. You, you mentioned trying to lower salt intake. Is there a recommended diet to help with lowering or maintaining healthy blood pressure? Absolutely. So the DASH diet or dietary approaches to stop hypertension eating plan has been shown to help reduce blood pressure in individuals with high blood pressure. The DASH diet is lower in total fat, particularly saturated fats, and is rich in vegetables and fruit. 
It includes low fat milk and milk products and is lower in sodium. As we talked, you can target specifically the sodium in the rest of your foods. And in some people, uh, potassium supplementation has been shown to help diminish or decrease um, blood pressure as well. So um, reducing your salt intake to about 2000 milligrams per day is a general rule of thumb. People may need to decrease their sodium intake if they have other conditions like heart failure, where your body wants to hold on to the sodium or chronic kidney disease. If you're in that situation, it's always good to have supervision from healthcare providers such as uh, dietitians to be very specific and help you learn how to eat in the appropriate fashion for your body. What type of exercise is recommended and for how long to reduce blood pressure? Well, the first thing to note is how effective exercise can be at reducing your blood pressure. Getting some exercise uh, can reduce your blood pressure by five to 10 millimeters of mercury, um, depending on the study and whether it's a systolic or diastolic. The Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines offer a useful guide. So it's recommended to get 150 minutes a week of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity. Uh, these can happen in bouts of 10 minutes or more. Um, and adding muscle and bone strengthening activities also um, are advised. So you want to pick activities that you enjoy so you're more likely to stick with it. Any activity that increases your heart rate and breathing is considered aerobic activity. These can include cycling, uh, running, swimming, dancing, gardening. So there's a whole host of things um, that you might find enjoyable that can help you achieve these goals. And combining aerobic and resistance training seems to provide the most uh, benefit for uh, heart health. I think too, when you're trying to change behaviors and patterns, setting uh, goals that are specific. So instead of saying, I'm going to do 150 minutes of exercise next week, um, and that might be very hmm, overwhelming for some people so starting out and saying, I'm going to do five minutes a day for the next week, and then I'll do 10 minutes a day the following week. Um, and then being able to measure those goals, making sure that your goals are attainable. So they're not unrealistic, um, and time bound. So not just saying generally, I'm going to improve my exercise, but saying this week or over the next two days, I'm going to improve my exercise. Um, by this amount. Following their primary care provider's recommendations, Russell made some lifestyle changes and decided that they would check in again after three months. They continued walking every day and adjusted their diet to align with the DASH diet. Russell reduced their daily salt intake to less than 120 milligrams per meal. Although Russell had made some great lifestyle changes, their blood pressure was still in the hypertension range. Together with their primary care provider, Russell decided that they would consider medication to help reduce their blood pressure. 